Hello, I am Jonathan Rosenfeld, and today I am joined today with Marty Gould on the Personal Injury Podcast, and I am going to talk with Marty about an emerging area of product liability litigation involving paraquat herbicide. Uh, Marty, I appreciate you joining me today. Thank you. Thanks for having me on, John. Now, Marty, we are sort of really in the early, early, early phases of what may emerge to be a very, very significant piece of product liability litigation involving Paraquat. Um, first off, can you just give us a little bit of overview in terms of what Paraquat is and how it's used and why it's used? Paraquat's a chemical herbicide that's used primarily in farming. Uh, it can also be used to, to kill weeds. And if you're a farmer, a landscaper, a groundskeeper, a gardener, you probably come into contact with Paraquat. Uh, in, in 2011, a study by the National Institute of Health found that people exposed to Paraquat are approximately 2.5 times uh, or 250 percent more likely to develop Parkinson's disease. And so today we're seeing there's been a, a trickle of lawsuits that have been filed um, down in Southern Illinois, but we're seeing a trickle of lawsuits that have been filed by primarily by agricultural workers who have been exposed to Paraquat uh, during their, uh, their work. Um, and they, the allegations are that they were uh, they were never warned of the potential dangers related to Paraquat. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, now that they're finding out, finding out about, or we're publicly finding out about the links between Paraquat and Parkinson's, uh, lawsuits have been filed, a lot of them in Southern Illinois, uh, against various companies that manufactured it or sold it. Um, and most of these plaintiffs are Illinois crop dusters or farmers, landscapers, and it's essentially that, that there was knowledge about these harms that weren't disclosed to the consumers. So, you know, whenever you bring in a case in terms of products liability, you're always, you have to give an alleg uh, make these allegations in your complaint. Uh, the primary allegation, I guess, at this point is that these manufacturers uh, knew or should have known of these dangers, but failed to put any warnings on the, the, uh, the product while the, uh, while they were using this, correct? And that's essentially the basis of the complaints is that they knew about a harm, just like in, in all the other cases with Zantac or Roundup, there was knowledge from studies in their own independent research about these harms or the risk of harm and the failure to warn the consumer that that use of it could increase the risks of Parkinson's or whatever the disease might be. And they have certain obligations to consumers uh, in regards to putting them on notice. Now, these cases are really in the, the early stages. You know, I anticipate there's gonna be uh, many, many, many more of these cases coming forward, many more lawsuits coming, coming forward. Um, it's safe to say that there have not been any settlements related to Paraquat lawsuits at this time? Not any on a wide scale basis, um, but you know, there, there has been a, a lot going on in terms of Paraquat uh, and various uh, countries is reviewing uh, Paraquat, uh, its safety. So the European Union banned the herbicide back in 2007. China, Brazil, and several other countries have banned its use. Uh, and I don't think we're too far away from seeing it banned in, in many other countries. Now, we can talk a little bit about or look to the litigation involving Roundup weed killer herbicide. Um, and what we've seen in terms of those lawsuits and the damages in those lawsuits. Um, can you talk a little bit about the damages that may be available in a Paraquat lawsuit? So in a personal injury case, you can seek compensation for your lost income, your lost earning capacity. Uh, if, if we establish that you did have Parkinson's or increased your risk of Parkinson's, um, that and it, and it caused all sorts of damages and you couldn't work. Those are all things you can legally get compensated for, but also more importantly, you get compensated for the physical and emotional pain and suffering. You know, the, tre the tremors that you're getting, 
the physical pains you get. These are all things that you can legally seek financial compensation for. Um, and that's why it's important to speak with a lawyer to find out what your rights are uh, and what types of compensation you can, you can personally collect in your case. Uh, Marty, some of these people who may be watching this video today or listening to this podcast, uh, they may have uh, uh, been affected either individually or they may have a family member who's been impacted by the use of paraquat or paraquat exposure. Um, what would you tell them in terms of moving forward? A lot of times these people may be sitting back and then they'd be thinking, oh, you know what, this happened years ago. Um, I may not have a claim. Uh, I may, you know, the time may have evaporated for me to, to pursue a case. What would you tell these people? It's important to speak with a lawyer who can examine your specific facts and know your rights. Uh, many states have laws uh, that allow you to still bring claims, even if your exposure uh, was from decades ago, or your or your Parkinson's that you had uh, was diagnosed decades ago, because many states have what's called a discovery rule. It's the point in time that you realize that your harm was caused by the defendant's negligence. Um, so it's important, you know, always consult with a lawyer, even if you think maybe it's too late, or maybe you think that there could be other causes for Parkinson's to find out what your rights are and see if if there's a possible connection. Marty, this is great information. I appreciate you joining me today. Thank you. Thanks for having me on, John.